I love going to the cinema. The massive screen, the comfy chairs, the crystal clear sound, and the overpriced popcorn. There really is nothing quite like it. But the things I like most about the cinema may surprise you. I love watching the trailers. Trailers are quite amazing when you think about them. They only have two or three minutes to generate interest in a film that could last well over two hours. Yet still, they grab the audience's attention, give them a clear idea of the tone of the film, and show just enough plot for them to want to find out more. So what about our introductions to our persuasive essays? Like a film trailer, how can we grab our readers' attention with our opening lines and make them keen to read on? Got your popcorn? This is Think 4. Although your persuasive essay is mainly centred on fact and reason, we still need to ensure that our reader is emotionally invested in what we're saying. The best way to do this is by opening our introduction with a hook. The hook to your essay is a short section in which you engage your reader before you even address your argument. You can do this through an anecdote. This is a short and engaging retelling of someone's personal experience of the issue you will be arguing. This is a particularly effective way to open a persuasive introduction as it allows you to use creative writing techniques, such as imagery and vivid description. If an anecdote is not for you or your writing style, then maybe have a look at including a shocking statistic. The key word in that sentence is shocking. Don't include a statistic for the sake of it, because it must serve a purpose. To surprise us, to challenge us, and most importantly, to make us read on. However, sometimes someone else can say it better than you. If so, open your essay with a quotation. This can be the words of someone who's an expert in the field or someone who experienced the topic about which you're writing. However, just as with the statistic, your quotation must be impactful. It must grab the reader's attention. So, now that we've hooked our reader, let's move on to our argument. One of the most common issues that I come across with introductions is vagueness. Sometimes I can get to the end of an introduction and no matter how well written it may be, I will still be clueless as to what the writer is actually arguing. A good way to avoid this is to state your argument clearly and in one sentence. Remember, the more straightforward your argument, the easier it is for the reader to follow. Now that you've told your reader what you're going to be arguing, it's time to summarize the main points of your essay. Your overall argument should only include three or maybe four separate points. If you go for fewer, you cannot show a wide understanding of the issue. If you go for more, you'll not have enough room in your word count to fully explore each point. When summarizing, brief is best. A sentence for each point is more than sufficient. Remember, you don't need to argue anything in your introduction. There is plenty of time for that in the rest of your essay. Rather, you just need to point out the arguments that you will be making. This is a good way to showcase your confidence in your argument and let the reader know that you know what you're doing. Your introduction really is the trailer for your essay. You can draw your reader in give them a good idea of what you'll be arguing and a little glimpse of how you're going to get it done. Just remember to follow the simple steps we discussed and then all the reader needs to do is sit back, relax and enjoy the show. This was Think 4. Thanks for watching.